cause of which he will become happy and glad in his grave. On the other hand, if he is from among the inmates of Jahannam, he is shown his abode in Jahannam, in Jahannam because of which his grief and worry will always be increased. So this, as we heard time and again, is a phenomenon that is inevitable. We all will have to face that day and taste the pangs of death. As we heard in the Juma talk also, because of the time constraint, I could not complete, complete, complete the details. There I was explaining the demise of Rasulullah Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that when death did not spare even Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how can he spare you and I? In the Quran, Allah Ta'ala has announced, إِنَّكَ مَيِّتُونَ مَيِّتُونَ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُونَ that just as every other person has to die, O oh my Nabi, death will overtake you as well. So as I explained in the Juma talk, Nabi Karim Sallallahu death, death illness lasted for approximately 13 days. It was a Wednesday when Nabi Karim Sallallahu took ill. And as I explained in the talk in Juma, because of lack of time, I could not complete the details, I thought, I would complete it now. So I explained that there were many pointers, indicators, when Nabi Sallallahu also realized that the time for departing from this world was approaching. Many signs, for example, every year Nabi Sallallahu used to make 10 days at the Kaaf in the month of Ramadan, but the year of his demise in that Ramadan, he made 20 days at the Kaaf. Each year Jibreel al Islam used to come to him, Nabi Sallallahu used to make door, revise the Quran, read out the Qur'an to Jibreel al Islam once. But in the year of his demise, he read the Qur'an out twice. That year during the farewell pilgrimage, the verse was revealed, Al-Yawma Akmaltu Lakum Deenakum, in which Allah Ta'ala gave glad tidings of the completion of this code of life, the Sharia of Nabi Karim Sawasam, which we are all bound to follow. And also Surah Al-Nasr was revealed earlier in that year, in which Allah Ta'ala explains, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْرِ That Allah Ta'ala's help has come, the conquest of Makkah has taken place, people are entering into Islam in droves and droves, so you should glorify your Rabb, praise Him, and make istighfar. Istighfar is normally done at the end of a noble task. This also indicated that Nabi Sallallahu mission on this earth was now accomplished. Then Nabi Sallallahu visited the martyrs of Uhud, who are buried alongside the Mount of Uhud, and he made istighfar for them, Isa al-Thawab, he went to Jannatul Baqi, and in such a unique style he made istighfar, that it appeared as if he was bidding farewell to them, that he will not return to make istighfar for the inmates of this qubur, for this Sahaba radiallahu anhu majma'in. When he got home, that day he was at the home of his beloved wife Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu she complained of headache. She said, Wa ra'asa, that, oh, I have a terrible headache. So Nabi Sallallahu in turn replied, I too have a headache. I should be saying that my head is throbbing. But then Nabi Sallallahu said to her that if you die before me, then I shall see to your needs, to the ghusl al-kafan. I shall perform your janaza salah. I shall have you buried. To that she replied in a light-hearted way that, yes, O Nabi of Allah, you are waiting for the opportunity for me to depart so that after you bury me that same afternoon you would get married to another woman to replace me, take someone else in my place. Nabi Sallallahu merely smiled. So this death illness commenced with this headache and as the days passed, Nabi Sallallahu health began deteriorating, fever increased, but yet that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Nabi Sallam continued to come to the masjid and lead the salah, lead the prayer. But each day, Nabi Sallam still fulfilled the rights of his wives. He used to, as his habit was, go from one wife to the next. Each wife was allotted a turn day after day. But in this illness, it was difficult for Nabi Sallam to move from home to home. In fact, he himself indicated his desire of wanting to spend his last days in the home of his most beloved wife, Hazrat Aisha Siddiqa Radulana, by asking the wives, Aina Akunu Ghadan, that tomorrow where will I be? 
So the wives also understood they put two and two together and Nabi Sallam wished to spend his final days at the abode of Aisha Radilanha. So they all gave their permission. So from Monday onwards up to the next Monday when Nabi Sallam passed away for approximately eight days, Nabi Sallam spent his final days at the home of Aisha Siddiqa Radilanha. Nabi Sallam was overjoyed at this. First of all, she was his most beloved wife. And secondly, she had the privilege that Hazrat Jibreel Salam was not allowed to enter the home of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam while the wife of that particular home is retired in bed. But as Aisha, as Aisha Radana was the exception. Even if she was in bed already, as a Jibreel Salam could enter with the wahi, with the revelation. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam thought that this was appropriate if there are some last messages by way of revelation, Hazrat Jibreel Salam would not feel reluctant to enter the home and convey the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to the masjid on Wednesday after Zuhar Salah, he gave his last address to the Sahaba Ikram radiallahu anhu Jmain. After performing Zuhar Salah, he addressed them. First and foremost, he mentioned the virtues, the manaqib of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala, indicating his lofty position, indicating that he was a person who would be the successor of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa and also to show his honor, Nabi Sallam explained many Sahaba's homes were surrounding the Masjid and Nabawi and the doors of the homes would open inwards towards the Masjid, easy entry into the Masjid, exit from the Masjid. On that day Nabi Sallam announced that no other Sahabi will be allowed to allow or permit his door or his window to open towards the Masjid except Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala. That is apart from Nabi Karim Sallam, no other Sahabi. The other Sahaba must use the door to exit from their homes towards the street. If they wish to come to the masjid, they would come right around and enter the masjid. Then Nabi Karim Sallallahu also gave a very important advice that just as the previous nations started worshipping the Anbiya after burying them, they used to make sadda at the graves. Do not do such an action at my grave. An intelligent person like Abu Siddiq Ardan immediately understood that Nabi Sallam is indicating that the time for his departure from the world is near. He buried his head in his hands and began sobbing. Nabi Sallam noticed this, but then he pacified the Sahaba, telling them that are you going to become panic-stricken by my departure? I am also but a mortal. Wa ma Muhammadun illa Rasul. Muhammad Sallam is also a Rasul like the other messengers that have went by. In other words, like the other Anbiya, he is also mortal. Like they passed away, he also has to pass away one day. وَمَا جَعَلْنَا لِبَشَرٍ مِّنْ قَبْلِكَ الْخُلْدِ And Allah Ta'ala says, addressing Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that before you, we have never granted any person eternal life in this world. Eternal life is a life of the year after. So then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went back to his home. He emerged that day to perform the Asr Salah to the Maghrib Salah. When the time for Isha came, he tried to get off his bed. He could not get the strength to move. He lost consciousness. And each time he regained consciousness, he explained to the wife, the wife, the wife, all the attendants there, the other wives also there, to help prepare some water so that Nabi Sallam could take a bath to remove the effects of that uh, unconscious state. But time and again, in spite of that, he was falling unconscious. Eventually, he said to the people, Muru Aba Bakrin, that give the command to Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala, he will from today lead the prayer. So from that Wednesday, Isha Salah, Hadrat Abu Bakr Siddiq Ardan led the Salah, he became the Imam, indicating that the person who is fit to occupy the Musalla of Nabi Sallallahu would be the person capable enough to succeed Nabi Karim Sallallahu as Amir al Mu'minin, the leader of the believers. That was Wednesday evening. Thursday also, Abu Bakr Siddiq Radan performed the Salah. Friday, Saturday, Nabi Sallallahu had to perform his namazes at home. But on Saturday, Nabi Sallallahu felt slightly better. So because of that, Salah had already commenced in the Masjid. But he beckoned to two Sahaba, and taking the support of the two Sahaba's shoulders, he supported himself on their shoulders, and dragging his feet along, he asked them to take him to the masjid. Abu Qasiddiq was already had started the salah, 
he was in the first zakat. But with the corner of his eye, when he noticed that Nabi Sam is approaching, he started moving backwards. Nabi Sam beckoned to him to remain put and continue making imamat. But he could not have that courage to continue in the presence of Nabi Sam. He moved back slightly, made way for Nabi Sam. Nabi Sam did not have the strength to stand up. These two sahaba made him sit down, and then he led the prayer. In a sitting position, the sahaba radiallahu majmain was standing behind him. And in this way, that salah was completed. But after that, that was on a Saturday, the next day, Sunday, Nabi Sam had no strength. And then when the Monday came, that was, that was the day of the demise of Rasul Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the early morning prayer, Fajr, or perhaps the Zohar prayer, Nabi Sallallahu suddenly felt, felt so much better, Salah was on. He himself walked to the door of his home and he moved the curtain away. Our Qasiddiq Radhan and the other Sahaba also noticed and they were totally astonished that Nabi Sallallahu has recovered completely. Looks like he's going to come into the masjid. They were overjoyed. But then again Nabi Sallallahu was overtaken by weakness. He could not get to the masjid. He went back into his room and he passed away on that day, which was a Monday. So after 13 days of the death illness. But what is very important for us are certain events that took place during the death illness of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One, as I mentioned in the Juma talk as well, Hazrat Fatima radhiallahu anha came to visit him, his beloved daughter, his beloved daughter, his beloved daughter. Nabi Sam whispered into her ear. The first statement he whispered caused her to burst out crying. And then he whispered something else which made her smile and become happy. Aisha Siddiqa Radna was witnessing this from a distance. She was also astonished that she had never witnessed such a scene. There's someone who was emotional, had begun to cry. In the next minute, all of a sudden, that grief is converted into happiness. So she was curious to find out that how did Aisha Fatima Radna regain her composure so quickly after crying, she asked her, but Fatima Radana refused to divulge. She said it's a secret. After the demise of Nabi Sallallahu she revealed that the first statement Nabi Sallallahu whispered into my ears is that every year Jibreel Ali Salam comes and I read out the Quran to him once, but this year he read out the, I read out the Quran to him twice with the hukam command of Allah, and this was an indication that I am shortly to leave the world. So obviously, Upon hearing that she will have to part from her beloved father, she began to weep. Then Nabi Sallam whispered into her ear a second statement. This she developed to Aisha Radulana only after the demise of Nabi Sallam. That the second statement was that do not be concerned from my family members. You will be the first person who will join me in the next world. So that, so that, so that made her overjoyed. Within six months she also passed away. According to other versions of the narration, Nabi Sam also gave us a glad tiding that from the women of Jannat, you will be made the queen of all the women in Jannat. So this also made her overjoyed, that made her smile. Also very significant, that Aisha Siddiqa Radhanana was very, very happy because of one other event that took place. The day that Nabi Sam passed away, Aisha Siddiqa Radhanana's brother, Hadrat Abdurrahman bin Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala, came to pay a visit to Nabi Karim Sawasam. Nabi Sawasam did not have the strength to even speak that week he had become. And he noticed in the hand of Abdurrahman bin Abu Bakr he was holding a miswak. So Nabi Sawasam, this sunnah of miswak was very beloved to Nabi Karim Sawasam. With the gesture of the eyes, Nabi Sawasam indicated that he wished to use the miswak. So this shows what an important sunnah of Nabi Karim Sawasam the miswak is, that even in his dying moments, Nabi Sawasam wanted to utilize the miswak. So he indicated that he wanted the miswak. Aisha Siddiq, Aisha Siddiq, Aisha Siddiq, Aradlana, took the miswak from her brother, but she noticed at the end of the miswak, the tip of the miswak was a bit hard. It would be difficult for Nabi Sawasam to chew on the tip and to use it to brush his teeth. So she in turn put it first into her mouth and she bit the end of the miswak to soften it a bit. After softening it, she passed the miswak to Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi Islam used the miswak and then gave it back. And just shortly after that, Nabi Islam's body went limp. 
he was resting on the chest of his beloved wife Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu and he uttered the words Allahumma rafiq al ala that oh Allah join me with you join me with a lofty companion let me come to you this was Nabi Sam looking forward to meeting his creator as Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu says that I remembered what Nabi Sam used to tell me in the days when he was healthy that every Nabi before he passes away when Malakul Maut comes to him then Allah Ta'ala commands Malakul Maut to give that Nabi the option either to stay on in the world or either to come and meet his creator. So every Nabi is given the choice. So she says when I heard these words, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi saying, Allahumma rafiq al-a'la, I understood that at that point of time he was given the choice and he was choosing to go, into, go, go and meet his creator because Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi was looking forward now. The mission in this world was accomplished. It comes in the hadith too. Man ahabba liqa Allah, ahabba Allah liqa'ahu. That the person looks forward to meeting his creator, Allah ta looks forward to receiving him. So Nabi Sallallahu was now prepared to go and meet his creator and he passed away. Hazrat Aisha Siddiqa Radulana, she was, she was happy at that event of the miswak. She used to tell the, tell the people that that was a joyous moment for me. That Jama Allahu Bayna Riqi wa Riqi Rasulullah Sallallahu Fi Akhiri Yawmi Min Al Dunya wa Awwali Yawmi Min Al Akhirah. She said that by virtue of that miswak, Allah Ta'ala combined and mixed my saliva with the saliva of my beloved husband, Nabi Karim Sawasam, because she first softened that miswak, so obviously her saliva went on to the miswak, and thereafter Nabi Sam utilized it, so his saliva also mixed with the saliva of his beloved wife. She says this took place in the last day of Nabi Sawasam in this temporary world, and the first day of his journey to the Akhirat, this greatly made her overjoyed. Also significant, during the death illness of Nabi Sawasam, he gave some parting advices, which were very, very pertinent, very significant, very important for us to take cognizance of, because those advices were for the entire ummah. For example, dur- during the days of his death illness, he said to the Sahaba, that, لا تتخذوا قبري وثنا Do not make my qabr a place of worship. So this encapsulated our aqaid, our beliefs, that we should remain steadfast on unity, on the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not ascribe any partners whatsoever to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this was with regard to aqidah. And Nabi Sallallahu also amongst the other advices, he said, As-salah wa ma malakat aymanukum. That look after your salah and treat your servants, your subordinates, your subordinates, very, very well, your slaves, your servants, be kind to them, be compassionate to them. So in these two words, As-salah wa ma malakat aymanukum, Nabi Sallallahu encapsulated divine rights and human rights. That the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have to be looked after and to be fulfilled, and human rights also have to be cared for. We cannot engage in human rights abuse, so Salah was referring to the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that from the ibadat, Salah enjoys the position of being the most prestigious ibadat to the extent, extent that the hadith tells us that awwalu ma yuhasabu bi al-abdu yawdu yawm al-qibdu yawm al-qiyamah as-salah. That the first thing that will, that will be taken into account that we will be accounted for on the day of the day of qiyamah we will have to answer for will be our Salah. That will be the first thing that will be questioned about. So this covers divine rights and looking after our servants, our slaves, our employees, people beneath us, that covers the human rights. The Nabi saw us indicating that do not become guilty of human rights abuse. So in this way, Aqidah came in, divine rights and the rights of fellow human beings. So in this way, in a few short words, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi encapsulated the entire deen. So human rights are also very, very important. People don't pay attention to this, and they regard it as trivial. Whereas human rights are such that if a person abuses another human, until he does not gain forgiveness from that human being he has oppressed, till then Allah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will not forgive him. Even if a person backbited about another person, made ghibah, then to 
unless and until a person goes up to that person and admits that I spoke ill about you behind your back, please forgive me, then only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive that person. So human rights abuse is such a grievous and serious crime that we ought to pay attention to it. In one hadith, Nabi Sallallahu once said to the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, that atadruna mal muflis, that do you know who is a bankrupt person, insolvent person? So the Sahaba, according to their understanding in worldly terms, they replied, Ya Rasulullah, al muflis ufina, mal la dirhamalahu, wala dinara, wala mata'a. That the bankrupt person is he who does not own gold or silver, he does not, not own, not own any material possessions, he is a bankrupt person. So then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam elaborated that Al-Muflisu min ummati man jaa yawm al-qiyama bi salatin wa siyamin wa zakatin wa qad shatama hadha wa dharaba hadha wa akala maadha hadha wa safaka dama hadha fa yuta hadha min hasanati wa hadha min hasanati hatta idha faniyat ma indahu min al-hasanat أُخِذَ مِنْ خَطَايَاهُمْ فَتُرِحَتْ عَلَيْهِ ثُمَّ تُرِحَ فِي النَّارِ أو كما قال عليه صلى الله عليه Nabi Sallallahu says that two bankrupt person is a person who will be bankrupt on the plains of Qiyamat. That person will come on the day of Qiyamat with a lot of namazas, lot of, lot of zakat, charity, lot of rosas, zaz, zaz. so divine rights he will have accumulated a great deal. But at the same, same time, he's guilty of human rights abuse. That he has sworn at such a person. He has uh, usurped the wealth of another person. He has shed the blood of another person. He has beaten up, some, beaten up someone. In this way, he has abused human beings. And on the day of Qiyamah, a person will not have rents and sins to pay for all these atrocities. There, the currency will be our good deeds. The oppressor will have to pay with his good deeds. So Nabi Sallallahu said that then Allah Ta'ala will ensure that to pay for those human rights abusers, the oppressor will have to give over his good deeds to the oppressed party. So how foolish is a person is? Like the example was given, that it is like you going to deposit some money into your bank, your bank account, but by mistake you write down the wrong account number, you put down the account number of your opponent, of your enemy. So instead of depositing the money in your account, you're depositing the money in the account of someone whom you do not like. So similarly here, obviously a person has sworn at someone, hurt a person whom he did not like. So he's giving away his good deeds in the bank of the Akhirat, depositing them in the wrong account, in the wrong account, in the wrong account. So good deeds will be taken to pay for those abusers. And for that in, and for that in, and for that injustices. With the result that if he was guilty of such oppression and such injustices, that if his good deeds are used up in order to do that payment, then the sins of the oppressed parties will be taken and thrown onto the shoulders of the oppressor. With the result that because of that burden, that oppressor will then be flung headlong into the fire of Jahannam. So that is how serious it is as far as human rights are concerned. So we have to prepare for that qabr by depositing in the bank of the akhirat as, as much good deeds as possible. If we have, as, if we have wronged Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as far as divine rights are concerned, seek Allah ta'ala's pardon. If we have wronged fellow humans, seek their pardon and then seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you can go with a clean slate. The good deeds that we send forward for the Akhirat will hold us in good stead, not only on the day of Qiyamah, but in the Qabr as well. It comes in one hadith that when a person goes into the Qabr, if he's a righteous person, he has accumulated many good deeds, in the Qabr, Salah will come and protect him from the right. Rosa will come and stand guard on the left. His Tilawat and Dhikr will come, stand guard at the side of the head. The steps he took to the masjid will come to him towards the feet side. They will be given a sort of a physical form to prepare him from any azab or punishment that approaches the qabr. And patience and forbearance at times of difficulty, that would also be given a physical form. It will stand in, it will stand in one corner of the qabr. When the azab tries and enter from the right side of the qabr, salah will push it away. That you, that you are not allowed to 
harm this person. Then the azab tries to come, punishment comes from the left side and Rosa pushes it away. Then the azab tries to enter from the head side into the qabr and tilawat and dhikr of Allah pushes the azab away. It comes from the feet side, the steps it took to the masjid, that averts that azab punishment and the person is protected. In this way he is not punished in the qabr. Patients and forbearance sit in one corner of the qabr says to this other ibadat, that I was waiting to see that if any weakness from your side, I would be prepared to assist, but you are sufficient to push the azab away. So now I will be of help to this person on the day of qiyamah when his deeds will be weighed. So that is the thing that will hold us in good stead, even in the qabr, our amal, our deeds. In one hadith, Nabi Sallallahu very beautifully has put it, that يَتْبَعُ الْمَيِّتَ ثَلَاثِ أَهْلُهُ وَمَالُهُ وَعَمَلُهُ يَرْجِعُ إِثْنَانِ وَيَبْقَى وَاحِدٌ يَرْجِعُ أَهْلُهُ وَمَالُهُ وَيَبْقَى عَمَلُهُ أَوْ كَمَا قَالَ لِسَلَاتُ السَّلَامِ That when a person dies, three things accompany him to the qabr. One is his family, to date to the family, go to the qabristan to bury the person. Second, his wealth. This was a custom of the Arabs. Their wealth was generally in livestock. So when a person would listen, would listen, would die, they would take his camels, his cattle worth to the Qabristan. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi says that two things return from the Qabristan, his family returns and his wealth returns. But the third thing that follows him to the Qabr, his amal, his deeds, that stays with the person and that is the thing that will grant him solace and comfort in the Qabr, protect him from the punishment in the Qabr. So that is what we ought to work towards, make an effort towards that the short life Allah Ta'ala has given us to make a concerted effort to deposit for the akhirat. Because this life is very, very short. No matter how many years a person gets, 80 years, 90 years, 100 years also, then too it is short. In terms of the akhirat, it is not even a drop in the ocean. We know we have heard Hazrat Nuh alayhi salatu salam, he spent 950 years making tabligh, inviting people towards the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if 950 50 years were spent in inviting people to the deen of Allah Ta'ala, his actual age must have been exceeding a thousand. So a man that lived for such a long period of time, when Malakul Maut came to extract his ruh, his soul, with the permission of Allah, Hazrat Ibri, Malakul Maut was also very, very curious, and he posed a question to Hazrat Nuh alayhi salatu salam, that Allah Ta'ala granted you such a long life. So how did you find this life? So the Nuh alayhi salatu salam replied, in spite of such a long life, this life appeared so short to me as if I entered a house from the front door and I'm exiting from the rear door. That is how short I found this life. So this life is very, very short. Imam Ghazali rahmatullah used to give an example that if a person has to fill the space between the sky and the earth with bird seed and then he brings along a bird and allows the bird to pack it one seed each day, one seed at a time. Imam Ghazali rahmatullah says, eventually those seeds will also be eaten up, they will become exhausted, but the life of the year after will never end. That is eternal, that is to last forever. So the life of this world is very, very short. We ought to appreciate the time that Allah Ta'ala has given us. As I mentioned also, on the day of Qiyamah yesterday I mentioned, we will be questioned how we utilize this life, how we utilize our youth. Let us spend our energy, the life Allah has given us, a trust of Allah Ta'ala and amanat. Let us spend it, let us spend it sensibly in carrying out the commands of Allah, in earning the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, so that Allah Ta'ala through His grace and mercy can pardon us. Because it is only through the mercy and the grace of Allah that the person will be successful in the year after. A person should not remain in the deception that my amal will take me into Jannat. It is only the rahmat and the fadl of Allah that will take a person into Jannat. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi used to exert himself in ibadat and stand for so long periods of time in tajud that his feet used to become swollen. Hatta tawarramat qadamahu. Someone asked Nabi Sallallahu that Allah Ta'ala has forgiven even your mistakes. You do not commit sins. But being a human, whatever mistakes you committed, Allah has even forgiven them. Forgiven them. So why do you exert yourself so much? So Nabi Sallallahu replied that, Afala akuna abdan shakura. Should I not be a grateful servant of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? 
On another occasion, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned that لا يدخل أحدكم عمله الجنة That your amal cannot take you into Jannat. The Sahaba asked, ولا أنت يا رسول الله Even your righteous deeds cannot take you into Jannat. Nabi Sallallahu replied, لا إلا يتغمدني الله بفضله ورحمته أو كما قال الإسلام That even my good deeds will not grant me a ticket to Jannat. Unless Allah Ta'ala showers me with His grace and His mercy. So that is why when we ask Allah Ta'ala for Jannat, ask Jannat on the virtue of the grace and the mercy of Allah Ta'ala. Our amal actions are so rotten, they are not even worth presenting in the court of Allah. Yes, we should keep the hope that in spite of our deficient amal, Allah accepts them. But keep more hope in the mercy of Allah, that Allah through your grace and your mercy, save us from the punishment of the next world and enter us into Jannat, inshallah, without reckoning. That is the dua we should make. We should ask for the fadl, the grace, and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ذَلِكَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ When Allah ta'ala favors his servants, Allah ta'ala showers him with his graces, and Allah ta'ala pardons him. Allah ta'ala make us, all of us, among those fortunate people that inshallah on the day of Qiyamah will be forgiven and given access entry into Jannat inshallah without reckoning wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillah subhanallah أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم رجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سلام على عباده الذين استفى سلام على المرسلين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأنزل المقعد المقرر عندك اللهم رب هذه الدعوة القائمة والصلاة النافعة صل على سيدنا محمد وارضى عني رضا لا تسخط بعد وابدا اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وارحم سيدنا محمد وعلى سيدنا محمد كما صليت وباركت ورحمت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد حميد مجيد اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد سيدنا محمد كما باركت على آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وزواجه وذريته كما صليت على آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وزواجه وذريته كما باركت على آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد 
الطيبات الصلوات لله السلام عليك يا النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله التحيات المباركة الصلوات الطيبات لله سلام عليك يا النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته سلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بسم الله وبالله تحيات الله وصلوات الطيبات السلام عليك يا النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله إلا الله وأشهد أن أن محمدا عبد عبده ورسوله رسوله أسأله أسأل الله الجنة وعوذ نتوعوذ بالله بالله من النار نسأل نسأل الله الله الجنة ونعوذ ونعوذ بالله من النار التحيات لله زاكيات زاكيات لله طيب عبادة الصلوات لله صلوات لله السلام عليك أيها عليك أيها النبي وبيه رحمة الله وبركاته وبركاته السلام علينا وعلينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين صالحين أشهد أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله إلا الله وأشهد أن وأشهد أن محمد محمد عبده ورسوله رسوله بسم الله بسم الله وبالله خير وبالله خير الأسماء الأسماء تحيات الطيبات الطيبات صلوات صلوات لله أشهد أن أشهد لا لا إله إلا الله وحده إلا الله وحده لا شو لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد محمد عبده ورسوله أرسله 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 بالحق بشيرا بشيرا ونذيرا وأن الساعة آتية لا ريب فيها السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين اللهم اغفر لي وهدني اللهم اغفر لنا وهدنا التحيات الطيبات وصلوات الملك لله السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله تحيات الله صلوات الله زاكيات لله السلام على النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين شهدت أن لا إله إلا الله شهدت أن محمد رسول الله التحيات الطيبات الصلوات زاكيات لله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمد عبده ورسوله السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين التحيات الطيبات الصلوات زاكيات لله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد عبد الله ورسوله السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين التحيات الصلوات لله السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين التحيات لله صلوات الطيبات السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله التحيات المباركة صلوات الطيبات لله السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله بسم الله والسلام على رسول الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم ربنا غلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا أفرغ علينا صبرا وثبت أقلامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا لا تزيق قلوبنا بعد إذ هليتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت وحاب اللهم إنا نسلك رضاك والجنة ونعوذ بك من سخطك وغضبك والنار اللهم إنك عفو كريم ورحيم تحب الأفاف عنا يا كريم اللهم إنك عفو كريم ورحيم تحب الأفاف عنا يا كريم اللهم إنك عفو كريم ورحيم تحب الأفاف عنا يا كريم اللهم حاسبنا حساب يسيرا اللهم بارك لنا في الموت وفيما بعد الموت اللهم أجلنا من النار يا مجير يا مجير يا مجير اللهم حبيب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والصيان وجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم إنا نسلك علم النافع ورزق حلال طيبا وعمل متقبلا وشفاء من كل داء اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك من نبيك وعبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من كل شر ما استعاذك من نبيك وعبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنت المستعان وليك الملاغ ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم 
ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم صلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين بفضل سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله